Hello there YouTube, this is Sybils and Bits back at it again with our showcase of November, which is a month where we are taking time to showcase some of my most favorite roguelikes of all time. Today we are possibly going to be talking about my actual, like, it's hard for me not to say that this is my favorite roguelike of all time, uh, and that is Renowned Explorers, uh, the Quest for the Holy Grail expansion. There are quite a lot of free DLCs for this game. I believe Quest for the Holy Grail was also free, but um, we're going to be playing with uh, technically all the DLC in this upcoming uh, showcase of the game. And uh, just to get into it, uh, what is Renowned Explorers? Renowned Explorers is a sort of pulp fiction of exploration like era game where you're taking a crew of three adventurers, each with their own stats and skills and uh, stuff like that. Their own uh, like quirks as well. Sometimes like if a character is mean, that's going to add extra dialogue options or force certain dialogue options. And you are basically trying to either exploit or convince natives of, um, you know, not to uh, sound absolutely rude, but underdeveloped countries, you know, we're exploring these areas, trying to get all their artifacts to put them in museums and gain fame for it. Sort of like an Indiana Jones sort of deal. I hear that it's very similar to a game called um, Curious Expedition, whereas uh, that game is more of... It's very similar in, like, the Oregon Trail-esque aspect of it, but uh, combat in that game is resolved via dice, or at least as far as I'm aware. And in this game, combat is resolved via actions, and is more closer to, like, a Fire Emblem-style game. Whereas this game is more of, like, a spreadsheet-style game, which is why I prefer it. You're going to take your team, and you're going to build them in order to succeed in checks which uh, are using their skills and their stats, which will give you rewards, which you then build them further to succeed further in skills and checks. And even though the game is like very solvable, there's definitely different ways to play the game. Down here we have the Community Challenge Archive, which has 200 uh, basically like challenge runs that you can uh, go through. Definitely gave a lot of hours to my game and you can go ahead, check that out and do a whole bunch of stuff because the game honestly has a lot of content, and when you start putting challenges on yourself, like, okay, I'm going to play as this team, do this thing, and I want to make sure that I hit these specific things in the campaign. Um, it uh, definitely, due to the, again, spreadsheet nature of the game, it uh, causes you to think about things like, oh, okay, like, how would I build this team? Am I forced to play a specific team? How do I curtail to my strengths and weaknesses? And it's very exciting. Um, I'm pretty <laughs> I'm gushing a lot about this game again. It's pretty much my favorite I used to have this entire game spreadsheeted weird flex, but uh, then I had to um, Format my hard drive and forgot to back uh, up that spreadsheet It was basically you would plug in your crew and it would already tell you your success rate of all the checks of all the areas and you would be able to say like oh, okay, I want to hit these things all right, build towards this. And um, I stopped playing the game after I lost that spreadsheet because that took a lot out of me. But uh, I always occasionally come back and try and do a couple more challenge runs. Uh, my white whale of this game is, is that I have a challenge run where I am trying to hug a T-Rex. Uh, spoiler alert, one of the final bosses is a living, breathing T-Rex and beating it with a friendly victory, as you might guess, is quite hard. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and get into it. Uh, as I said, there's two paid DLCs for the game that I'm aware of, or at least big expansions. One of them is More to Explore. I would highly recommend picking that up if you can when you buy the game, because it gives a lot of, um, again, team building, character development. It's kind of quirky, gives you a way to, like, force your run into specific directions and gives you new directions to build your run. There's also the Emperor's Challenge, which is more of like a randomizer hit list sort of um, deal. I would recommend that more towards if you've played the game quite a bit and you enjoy it and you want to experience the game in a different light because it plays significantly differently. 
Um, it also gives you access to four explorers, two of which we are going to use in this run. So technically we're still using it, but um, just so that you know, if you are looking to pick up this game, I will leave a link down to the Steam store in the description down below. It's a pretty old game, so it goes on sale quite often. And uh, yeah, you don't necessarily have to pick up Emperor's Challenge is basically what I'm saying. So we're gonna start a new game. And pretty much uh, the... Okay, how do I say this? Uh, the base game has all these characters from slot 5 to the left. And they are sorted into scientists, which are great at um, uh, performing research-related checks. Scouts, which are pretty much um, in combat. They have dodge chance. Uh, they can sometimes give you extra resources out of combat. Most of them are glass cannons. You have access to fighters, which usually are very good in physical confrontations, and speakers, which are good in, like, vocal confrontations. In this game, there's basically, like, there's three different approaches that you can go with, and you can go towards, like, five different resources. Uh, basically, there's friendly, which is, you know, being cooperative with the natives and convincing them that you have the correct cause and like oh yeah we should give these people things because they're nice people and then you have uh, devious which is you know either undermining or insulting people and breaking their self-confidence and just convincing them that they should just stop uh, doing what they're doing and that uh, you're the best opportunity or just stay the frick out of your way and then there's obviously aggressive which is um well i think that aggressive pretty much speaks for itself and so each of these um characters and each of these four different professions has an inclination towards those they are proficient in one and they have secondary in others and then of course you can obviously like mix them around a bit we have one character who's a captain and two crew members. The captain's rather important. They start with bonus health. I believe it's like uh, 5 or 10 bonus health. And then, of course, they instill a benefit to the team depending on who they are. I'm pretty sure that we are going to... I'm going to butcher this, so we are just going to call them Min. So we are going to have Min be our captain. And so, basically, whenever we spend um, what's called campaign tokens in order to basically hire people to improve our uh, stats, then uh, it's also going to buff our discovery tokens, which is like our big science tokens. And science is then another resource that we could then invest into improving our crew and shaping our build. This is more to explore here as is these down here. There are campfires that you get access to once per expedition. And at those campfires, we get to choose one card that we want to play. Doubles are not included. So if I was to take multiple Eurekas, it, they would not have multiple Eurekas in the deck, which means that it's actually easier for me to get the ones that I want. And then of course, everybody has a stat benefit campfire story and everybody has a actual campfire story which can either be an instant gratification like buffs to everybody or it can be something that actually plays out throughout the course of the game and it's like okay well one of them is that um dolores here will actually set up a cage match because she thinks that everybody needs to get stronger so you actually need to build athletics on your team in order to win the cage match and if you do then obviously there's benefits to it but if you don't then um you know you still get free access to athletics which helps you make checks and stuff like that going back to uh men here so they do a very good job at describing exactly what the characters are good at if you are not familiar with the game and they also give very good recommended teams too of course when you want to actually like start min-maxing your teams you're going to want to go with something else but um everybody also has access to two uh perks or skills and these will not only buff your stats let me just take a look here 
Every uh, archaeology, for example, gives us plus two speech defense and plus one speech. And each character also has a leveling progression tree, which gives them access to new abilities and extra trinket slots and then more skills. That means that you don't have to invest otherwise to get access to, say, more archaeology or more diplomat in this case. And um, one thing that I forgot to mention is that every character has access to a specific skill that isn't available anywhere else. For instance, uh, Min has royalty. And so the odds are of you running into a check that's looking for royalty specifically for a bonus is very minimal, but you get more stats and you don't have to worry about like overlapping that when you're trying to build characters in the future. Otherwise, like I said, um, they generally are very good at one stat and then not very good at another. Uh, Min has the advantage of actually being 100% efficient in both her devious and friendly nature. Uh, generally speaking, characters will have, like, say, an Excite and then a Try to Sadden or such like that. And so she actually is exceptionally good at both, which is really rare. Makes her very good for a, um, again glass cannon with high speech. Other characters that we are going to want is Hojo. Oh, well, let's actually select down here. Hojo. So the reason why we are picking Hojo here is because he has access to Quick Thinker, which is pretty good. He does pretty good in Friendly Cruise. He's actually a pretty tanky scout, which is not something that you usually run into. Usually scouts are glass cannons. And um, most notably, is it here? It's one of these. We're going to find it. Don't you worry. Here. At level 3, he gets access to Suspicion, which replaces the Dire, Friendly versus Aggressive Mood, with uh, Shaken, which only gives negative 5 armor. We'll go into that more later, but just remember that this is a special mouse tool that's going to significantly help us later. And then, always my characters up on Flex on the third slot. I think that we may... Like, we can technically take Ivan. He's actually more aggressive, but his um, his campfire story actually halves his attack, adds his armor as speech, and then gives him basically his try to excite becomes a normal excite. And uh, basically allows him to curb into that, but you have to actually get that campfire effect. Otherwise, he's pretty much just going to wreck face and so we're not really going to do that one i kind of need another defensive character so that honestly might just be victor victor's pretty good um he's a good all-round character he also has access to uh friendly and most importantly he has tactician which is a special skill sometimes if you have certain levels of tactician generally three five and seven some combats you'll just be like a hey, everybody gets a buff because you got enough tactician dope so i am all about that and i think this is going to be our crew um we are going to play as uh classic difficulty which is one below impossible uh we are playing on adventure mode which means that if we do lose we it is game over otherwise if you want to just you know explore the game then uh you can go into discovery mode which allows you to more, um, well, it, it allows you to reload your save. Uh, you can also choose your starting island. I generally go with random starter because I really don't have any inclination towards one towards the other, but different islands have access to different treasures, which are like relics that's going to buff your game. And they are also predisposed towards a specific resource campaign, which you use to, again, hire people to give you Permanent effects, research gives you um, more situational effects, and then of course gold, which is good at giving you equipment, which can also buff stats, but mostly buff your combat stats. We're going to go ahead and start. Hopefully I didn't lose you all there. That was 15 minutes explaining how the game uh, works at a fundamental level. And we got more explaining to do. <laughs> Uh, we are not going to go through the tutorial. 
Okay, so first off, like I said, characters have different quirks. And one thing that we are noticing here is that Hojo has a debuff because of the fact that he does not like that his captain is a, um, a small child. And so he's going to lose one spirit, which is our health. That's hopefully not going to be a huge benefit or a uh, huge demerit, but uh, we'll have to see about that. So in this overworld, we've got this fog of war and we can explore one area at a time. These ones between here means that this route costs one supply. Some uh, routes are actually like free passage. Some routes are uh, like, say, heavy terrain. So that's going to cost two to travel there. And then, of course, whenever we move to a location, that is going to reveal any connected areas. They also have these little tabs here that show that, um, you know, what type of a node this is. Uh, and then, of course, they do a good job of explaining here. Nature challenges usually require an athlete, naturalist, or survivalist, of which we have none. And right here, we will uh, gain supplies when we go here. Our supplies are up here. And this is sort of like your Oregon Trail exploration. We want to get as much as we can and get to the boss encounter before our supplies run out. Running out of supplies does not mean that we immediately lose. We just start taking heavy buffs if we take one debuff it's usually fine if we take multiple after that it starts reducing our stats to the point that the final boss becomes significantly harder now um we also have our resolve this is basically our lives there are certain checks that if we fail them will reduce our resolve or if somebody gets downed in combat that will also reduce our resolve once this reaches zero we lose anything else that we have to explain immediately here not really i think our um, resources are going to be collected up here and those are mostly important in the next phase of the game so we're going to explore here this unlocks the most nodes we're going to go ahead and hit those um, i'm pretty much going to ignore the uh the lore or like the the fluff the written text of the game if something particularly like comedic happens i'll like maybe mention it but for the most part we're just looking here at these checks and this is an example of a check so this is a athletic check and due to it being an athletic check which is normally tied to a fighter um how do i <laughs> So, athlete is normally tied to fighter, and it gives a primary stat of armor, so that is also reflected. Or armor is referred to as your physical strength and checks. And so you can see we've got 27% chance from our armor. We are a fighter, so we're the collect correct class, so we get a plus 20%. And then there's a 10% base chance. If we had any stacks of athlete or athlete skill, that would improve our odds even more. And another thing that you might notice down here is that these little tokens that we're getting. Um, if we win with uh, Victor, we're going to get a campaign and a collect. That's the normal rewards. Plus a bonus collect. That is due to his class. So if we win with a scientist, we get a study. Um, and I believe a speaker would give us an extra campaign. Otherwise, both of these cl classes, the scout and the the fighter, will give us collect. And failure doesn't really do anything bad to us. So if we wanted to, we can maybe be like, okay, I want to try the 10% for a uh, study. Probably not a good idea. And so... We're obviously going to take our best chance here, the 50-50. It's uh, dealt with a roulette wheel here. We have failed. So we receive nothing. Good day. You lose. I'm actually going to head down here to this. I believe this gives us either two or three supplies. It gives us three supplies. We technically wasted one, but otherwise that was in a location that wasn't going to be efficient for us. So since I'm a level 1 archaeologist, that also unlocks specific uh, advantages or specific, like, things that we can do. 
Not always necessarily the best, but usually the case if you have a special thing due to a level of skill, it's generally a good idea to take. And so we get two campaign and three study tokens. So these are things that we earn during an expedition. And currently, each of these tokens is four to six random research at the end of the, uh, the expedition. And this is five to 10 to 15 status. Again, status allows us to recruit people that give us passive benefits. And research allows us to unlock air quotes technologies that give us sometimes stats, sometimes like bonus modifiers, all those sorts of things. Lots of if then statements. Uh, we are also one more note away from being able to unlock our campfire, which again allows us to sort of curb our team a little bit more. I think that we're going to head here and try and wrap around here. We should have more than enough there. So this has an account an encounter. They are telling us that they are aggressive, but we are a level one technicians tacticians. We gain some buffs. So this is what the um, combat screen looks like. First off, if we resolve it in a specific way. We will get a benefit. We are going to try a friendly approach, which isn't wise, and I will explain that here. You can see that there's sort of like a Fire Emblem style weapon wheel. Weapon wheel. If they are friend or they are aggressive and we are friendly, they have the benefit. If we are friendly and they are devious, we have the advantage. And so what that's going to do is it's going to apply a global well, in this case, a debuff to us whenever we decide how we want to engage this fight. Enemies here can have resistances or weaknesses to specific um, moods that we put them in. And stuff like encourage, making enemies confident or excited, giving them plus speech is... Um, separate moods which will give them different uh, buffs or debuffs that gives negative speech defense it also has a range of two so we're going to move you there hit you with that there is a bit of deviation as you may have seen there and as you see the situation is now dire and what it does is it removes 20 armor from us being at negative armor is seriously bad, and that is particularly why Hojo is going to be going towards that one level 3 perk, which makes this negative 5 armor. Because as you probably can guess, a Tyrannosaurus Rex is likely going to be aggressive. So that's part of the challenge of this run, or this challenge that I've put in place of myself is, well, <laughs> obviously uh, we're fighting an uphill battle here where we have uh, decided this is a defensive tile so I'm going to go ahead and stand on that hopefully it's going to be fine there are battle animations in the game by the way I have turned those off because while they are charming they get old after a while and they just take time uh, that was really huge I think we have this done. Gonna impress you, redu reduce your speech defense, and then uh, convince you that we are cool people. We still get two encounter tokens regardless of how we finish the fight, and every fight that we do also gives us bonus stats for the rest of the expedition. It's sort of like learning how... It's like enemy research is the idea behind it, and these stats get significantly higher the more combats that you do so even if you are technically like a friendly or a devious approach and you're technically making your way towards uh skill checks actually being able to perform combat is pretty significant because it gives you access to more stats and not only are we going to unlock our campfire uh victor is going to level up I don't know where... Oh, I think the extra XP became came from... He spun once on the wheel, even if he failed. So he is leveled up. I would actually like you to have Tactician 3. Because that is the next tier of, like... 
combat benefit. And then we're going to take this campfire story. Two supplies and uh, somebody games, charms, or diplomat generous. I want to keep that. Uh, we don't really want to... Like, this starting island isn't that great. Having this towards a different expedition that could give us better rewards would definitely be better for us. Um, gain renown per level of diplomat in your crew. Renown is something that I haven't really explained because it shouldn't be an issue in our game. Is technically, every token or resource that we get is going to give us renown. And renown is put towards a leaderboard which basically determines if you win the game at the end of the game or not. Um, technically, I suppose there is a way to do all five expeditions and not like get enough renown to win, but I, I feel like that would be more of a challenge run than anything significant. I don't know. It's been a long while since I've had to actually worry about renown. Um, I don't really care for that some encounter would be nice because encounter is basically a uh, campaign and a collect token like this obviously gives us more collect um, collect of course allows us to buy gear we're going to want gear because well min is made out of paper and we are going to run into some aggressive lineups. And her getting sniped, sometimes literally, is not going to be good for our overall resolve. So getting her armor as soon as possible, rounding out everybody else's stats that we're good at combat, is also a great idea. Also buffing us early, because Min's... Um, Men's passive, of course, whenever we hire people to buff our collect and our campaign tokens, that actually buffs our discovery token, which is what we're generally going for. Because again, that's like the premier. It's like a study token, but significantly better, but obviously significantly rare. I think we're actually going to take the collect. And we won't keep the the encounter. So that just gives us eight. Anything that we're not keeping will not be available next time. And then next uh, campfire we have, we will draw up to our hand size and then choose another one from there. Okay. We have no speakers and we must scream. Well, I'm going to go for the extra 1% chance. To be expected. Um, I don't think I actually necessarily need Architect Archaeology 3. It's pretty good. But I think that we're going to take um, Diplomat Etiquette. Because Archaeology Legends, I believe, is kind of easy to get. I haven't played this game in a long while. This is where a spreadsheet would come in handy. Um, okay. We gained an extra Diplomat, so that gave us an extra 20% here. Otherwise... Uh, 15% because his crew member has a fancy beard. Hmm. hmm. Um, I believe we want Viking artifacts on this crew. Yes. Never trust Pinkerton. Plus one collect whenever a fighter succeeds on athletic or tactician. So if we manage to give you one um, fighter, then you're able to get us free money every time that you succeed on a roll, which seems pretty dang good. Now, 
this is means that this is what this treasure does like specifically um there are sometimes treasures can have multiple things that they do but they generally are leaning towards a specific thing that they're trying to do these are just because we're on the viking expedition so viking treasures give us status bonuses which again we kind of like statuses uh, gaining more status from our campaign might be a good option because, again, status allows us to hire people that buff our tokens, so then we can get more tokens. And uh, But uh, I think that um, getting more money is kind of important to us. That fancy beard coming in clutch. So one of the empty nodes is a hidden hoard on every single like map. Um, on this one, it's kind of easy to tell because there's not a lot of nodes and most of them have stuff on it. And I would like a... Um, I actually think we don't necessarily want a discovery. We haven't buffed it. I think that getting a treasure hunt is probably better for us. Maybe it's a secret, actually. Of course, uh, Treasure Hunt is like the Uber Collect token, and Secret is the Uber Campaign token. They're basically like two different ones. Like this is worth five Campaign tokens and two Research tokens. Pretty freaking good. And if we go here, we will get a small debuff, but then we're going to go into combat here. I believe going into here for some combat is a good idea. Uh, they're going to perform devious, so we're going to have an advantage being friendly. We now have access to Cute Stare, which is a line shot that deals like heck a ton damage. Um, and this is, again, where Min is pretty friggin ridiculous because she's just able to theoretically nuke things before they're a problem we could up roll and actually like knock these people out i guess another thing to note here is that um down below there uh their health bar which is that first top bar that is currently hashed in for our damage you also see their mood so, enemies can have good moods or bad moods. If they're in a good mood, they're immune to, like, say, negative status effects like fear, enrage, um, saddened. But, obviously, we are also going to impart them with the, the element of the last hit that we did, which is excite, which improves their speech, which is technically not good for us. Um... We get speech defense for, you know, being in the advantage here anyways. And we're probably just going to finish these guys off and not let them... Peace Treaty actually would have taken care of that. It's an AoE, um, Excite. And it also says that it counts, uh, three friendly for the mood. And gives them a negative attack debuff, which, again, versus a T-Rex is kind of good. Um... So, if I want to flip moods, which some crews are very good at flipping moods, I have to perform an amount of moves here, right? So, three devious will flip us over to devious, but only a single aggressive attack will actually switch us over to aggressive. Now, obviously, we don't want to do that, but that's basically what that does there. It's very good at flipping us over to friendly if we wanted to swap moods. Because sometimes you gain a benefit for being in a specific mood, like being hostile, for example. But you don't want to end with the debuff, so then you flip yourself back. I believe there's even a couple of items that are like, hey, whenever the mood flips, you gain a benefit. Like I said, a lot of content in this game. Kind of hard to keep track of all of it. That's what spreadsheets are for. <laughs> Bits continues to complain about his missing spreadsheet. 
and I think that I actually want to grab Athlete on this person. He's probably going to be our primary Athlete. We do want to get one Athlete on Victor so that he gets access to that, um, that benefit. And every Tactician role he will um, get us collect every time he succeeds. But uh, we also need somebody to actually complete Athlete roles. Now, if that's Victor, that's fine. But um, we also kind of want to, I don't know. I could honestly see us going for just Quick Thinker all in on this guy so that he just takes care of all those checks. Having a high Quick Thinker is pretty good. We're going to try that this run, I guess. Um, gives you grit and speech, which is stuff that we use. You also get reaching out, which is... Uh, it removes aggressive and devious pips and adds three friendly to mood. So again, allowing us to swap back over pretty quickly. I don't think that we're going to be doing much of any of that. So, uh, Rivalo is our, like, rival, if you didn't guess. And uh, he's kind of a D-bag. And his three henchmen always attack us here. Now, in this situation, we get a random boss. And if we meet them and their preferred, like, combat outcome then they're going to give us a benefit on our next thing. If we use the thing that he has an advantage on, it's neutral. If we use the thing that has an advantage on him, he will not give us, like, <laughs> anything at all. So, sort of like a press your luck here, we are going to go ahead and go, I guess, all in on what we are already doing. Of course, we have a distinct numbers disadvantage here it might pay to be aggressive for a little while and then flip over And we gain an extra pip because we actually knocked someone out with it. I think we are going to flip at this point. I kind of wish that I could hit the two of you. So what we honestly might do... Like... Min is going to get absolutely liquidated if, <laughs> if we let her. So this is about three. So we should be able to move here. Maybe here. And still snipe you. I just hope that Hojo doesn't get got. That helps. That helps significantly. Okay. So, we don't want to end you on confident, because that's going to boost your attack. You are vulnerable to being saddened. You want to talk about that? Going to hit you there. We actually don't have the movement to... I guess we're going to make you sad. Um, should work. Let's just add another point of... Happiness to this. Because I'm hoping to end friendly. There we go. Alright. Alright.
we don't have anybody for this check, if I remember correctly. I think we're going to take this one. Okay. We are not going to end uh, encounters aggressive, so I guess we're just going to take a permanent buff to our campaign tokens. So that is a completed expedition. And this basically just tallies everything up again. Um, it's a range, like 10 to 15. So sometimes you roll well, sometimes you don't. And again, this is just uh, showing, okay, you need this much uh, renown in order to beat Rivalo at the end of the game and be considered, you know, the most renowned explorer. Don't really care. Like, I'm more afraid of losing than I am to losing the score at the end of the game. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to explain the, the overworld map, and then we're going to cut this video and continue this at a later date. Because I am unfortunately not going to do a five to six hour long video explaining everything that's going on here. We get this every single time after we do our first expedition, which is nice. It gives us an insight, which we will explain, but also... 10 supply capacity. Now, so we get to spend our insight on a number of things. And we can spend that on getting collect. We can spend that on getting campaign. We can spend that on doing research. And then, as you might guess, certain classes get a bonus whenever they perform it. Like, uh, obviously, men being a scientist class gets a plus one research whenever she spends insight to research. Otherwise, I believe it's the campaign hall. No? There we go. Um, fighters get and switch one of their campaigns for an encounter token, which is like a... Well, we can go ahead and take a look here. An encounter token is basically worth two collect and then also some status. So that's basically how they roll with that. Sometimes you go all in on encounter tokens because you're going into a lot of encounters. And so then this looks pretty good. Otherwise, you can just get an extra collect by using a scout. And then speakers will just get an extra campaign whenever they use insight for campaign. You can also have specific items on people or specific levels that are like, hey, when I use insight at this location or to do this, give me an extra whatever. All right. Other things that we can do. We have access to a simple item shop, which can give us access to skills, gain the engineer advanced tools perk for existence, and resist damage taken from terrified speeches, which um, resistance is half damage. And it does not stack, by the way. This one gives us survivalist um, navigation. We can choose to upgrade our shop, which will give us access to more things. And we also have access to combat slots, which currently we are using our book here, Love's Book. But this will skew more towards attack power, 4 to 1, whereas this is just a plus 1. So obviously, gloves are better. But we don't ever really want to attack. Sometime our attack power will be used for checks, and that's about it. So we would prefer actually to get decent books on everybody, assuming that we have enough cash to do so, and most importantly, getting armor on people, because um, she has zero armor, zero damage reduction. This is a diminishing return sort of stat, and, well, we would prefer to at least have some mitigation in armor. Then, of course, boots are only equipable by scouts, and it basically gives them grit, which is a chance to dodge all damage. We can also go to an entourage, which is, as we were describing before, this is Min's, like, captain passive. Uh, we can use our status 
in order to um, buff our tokens. Plus campaign, plus discovery, plus collect, plus discovery, plus research, plus discovery. And that second one, again, is min. Because anytime that we uh, take on Entourage, it's going to buff our discovery in a relative fashion. So, this is also a relatively good place for us to be spending our um, status. And we would want to do that before we start collecting status from, say, other locations but we don't have a speaker in this party so buffing that isn't necessarily like the best other thing we can do go to specialists so what do specialists do they teach us um skills and also give us benefits to um certain checks and stuff they pretty much reward having level four of a stat and um, obviously we want to get an athlete on Victor so that he can activate his thing. And unfortunately, I don't think we're ever going to have a level 4 athlete in this crew. Maybe. Otherwise, we can also make Hojo a level 4 quick thinker. And then anytime that he succeeds on the adventure wheel, we get one campaign. So on and so forth. And so then upgrading it will give us access to better ones here. And then as you get up higher, they obviously get better. Uh, these, I believe, are also randomly assigned. Like the nine skills are just randomly assigned between tiers ones and tiers three. And then, of course, doubling the amount of uh, insight that we... Uh, amount of tokens that we get from insight by going to these here are great and eventually we will get access to better locations which we will want to spend our stuff at but i don't know that's about it so i think i'm going to just start oh well one more thing i should probably explain research so we get to spend research on sort of a civilization I believe four was the first one to do it where you have certain like um institutions and then you unlock papers within that that give you a benefit we actually want to we're about entourage so we're going to go ahead and go for history immediate lobby sounds good Hmm. Plus one token sounds great. I also like the supply capacity. That's relatively good, and I think we're going to back out. That's pretty much going to have to be how it goes. Like, in actuality, it was probably better for me to do it the opposite direction. Get the plus one token, and then research. Get the extra insight. We kind of don't ever want to be here. This gives us extra status, though. So I'm kind of feeling this. And it's only slightly less gold. So we're going to use you to bump this up. Gain one study when you resolve an encounter friendly. That seems pretty good for us. I think we're going to go ahead and take that. And we're going to kind of go for a status build here, I believe. Am I able to? No. Probably should have thought of that one. Status from encounter. A bit late for that. That would have been good to have before he started going uh, hog wild. 
Wouldn't have given us that much. Maybe would have given us this extra merchant. That's about it. Anyways. We're feeling pretty good about our... Well, relatively good about our usage there. Now let's go ahead and get people some decent defenses. Because I feel pretty good about our offenses. Like our speech is... Pretty good. Like, consider if she's a glass cannon, how much speech these people have. We can go ahead and sell these. There's really no reason to keep them. I would like to upgrade. And then I would really like you to have some actual armor for 23% damage reduction. And then you could use more speech defense to balance yourself out. And for now, I think we're just going to give you some basic boots. And that's about it. Unless, how much does this sell for? 15. Oh, we haven't sold them yet. Oh, I did. Keck. Alright, so we can go ahead and upgrade her to give her a better book. Alright. Probably could have been better on the money department, but not too bad. Anyways, um, we're probably going to be playing this throughout the rest of the week in order to, well, hopefully, uh, so long as we don't get bopped, right? But we're going to be playing until we get absolutely destroyed, or we hug that T-Rex, or get destroyed after hugging that T-Rex. And um, I don't know what else to say. If you guys uh, decided to end up picking up the game from watching this, be sure to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, if you have any other feedback, be it questions, comments, concerns, misplay alerts, be sure to leave that down there as well. And until next time, we will catch you guys around.